controversy about public art has existed since art has existed. People wrote graffiti on the pyramids right away. And perhaps the first removal of a piece of prominent public art in America happened in 1841, when Horatio Greenough's statue of George Washington was removed from the Capitol. A key question for the tour will be exploring just how permanent any public art is. With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right. What this monument, the text on it, has text from the end of Lincoln's second inaugural address. So it's an important statement. To do all which may achieve a just and lasting peace for ourselves and with all nations. This sculpture of Abraham Lincoln by Gatano Ceseri commemorates the 60th anniversary of Lincoln's visit to Milwaukee in 1859. It was placed on the bridge, but at a different location in 1934. It was removed in 1954 when the War Memorial was under construction. I am using it on the tour to represent the monument phase of public art. This is not to say that monuments aren't being installed today. However, most of America's early public art was in honor of great men and great moments in our history. In the 20th century, there was a shift towards modernism, and much of the public art following World War II has been abstract. And there is a reason for this. Deciding which people or events should be commemorated and how depicted had kindled a lot of public debate. And this is great. People should care. However, one way to remove the debate is to remove specific content. People might not like the art, but except for a few exceptions, there was less there to get people engaged or enraged. It is 40 feet high. And the other thing about it is that it's made out of steel. It's like what you would use to build a really big building. So it's this big orange thing. And if you're in the right spot, it looks like a big orange sun. And some people think a big orange sun rising. The Calling by Mark de Suvero is interesting because it's an abstract piece with content. It was installed in 1982 at the east end of Wisconsin Avenue. The Milwaukee Art Museum selected the artist and found an anonymous donor. The Department of City Development suggested art for the site and even though no city money was involved, there were 11 hearings prior to its approval. The calling had originally had this grand vista of Lake Michigan as its backdrop, and then O'Donnell Park was built, and then the Santiago Calatrava addition to the Milwaukee Art Museum. So the latest controversy about the calling, and this discussion is now a decade old, is whether it should be moved because of the way it lines up with the Calatrava wings. A lot of current public art in America, starting in the 1970s, is funded through Percent for Art programs programs at the national, state, and local level set aside around 1% of funding for certain construction projects for public art. This is what happened with pedestrian drama on the east end of Wisconsin Avenue. There was a 1% for art requirement attached to a federal grant received by the city of Milwaukee to mitigate congestion downtown and promote pedestrian activity. Regina Flanagan was hired by the Department of Public Works to administer the competition that selected Janet Zweig, a prominent public artist based in New York. Trouble started in 2009 when Flanagan's funding ended and a traffic engineer presented Zweig's proposal to a committee of Milwaukee aldermen. He showed the committee a prototype of what the flap sign animation would look like. The alderman did not understand that it was an example, not the art, and in my mind, some were legitimately worried. Zweig's goal with her proposal was to enhance the pedestrian experience. She wanted a project that viewers could participate with on an intimate scale, one person at a time. On the tour, we'll see whether we think Zweig's piece succeeded, walk to two other locations, and discuss the role of the public in public art. Of course, we'll talk about Blue Shirt.